In this video, I will be attempting to survive 100 days in the African savanna in Hardcore Minecraft. This will be a very difficult challenge as not only will I have to worry about extreme weather and heat, but also wildlife. Rhinos, snakes, crocodiles, and lions are just a few of the mobs I'll be encountering. Now, I made this map using World Painter and decided to include the famous Mount Kilimanjaro, as well as many other biomes and structures for me to explore. All I know is that I want to summit this mountain before the 100 days are up, and I also want to hunt a lion. But without further ado, let's get started. As soon as I spawned in, I noticed an issue. I immediately went to find shade in order to cool off. Right? Doesn't this... doesn't this work? Yeah. Okay. And from there, I decided to get some wood and then check my crafting recipes to see if there's an armor that could cool me off. Got okay. cooling, packed ice, blue ice, soul lantern. Anyways, I came across the recipe for leaf armor, which was pretty straightforward. And so my first objective was to get iron to make shears so that I could collect leaves for the armor. I need iron. Oh, it's gonna be hot out here. However, before I got to work, I wanted to take a quick look around. Yeah, maybe the shore is the best bet here. And that's when I came across a wandering trader. Oh? You can literally find these guys anywhere. Like, they just show up. It's a little bit weird, isn't it? Just gonna see what you got open. Blue ice? Yeah. Anyways, I soon came across something that wasn't so friendly. Oh. And another thing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm, I'm getting out of the water. Alright. By this point, I needed both food and water, and the sun was starting to set. I don't want to be in the savannah right now. In other words, I wasn't doing very well, and so I did the only natural thing for a brave man to do. I went underground and made a little hidden base. With it being night above me, I heard creepy noises as I dug my tunnel. I don't know what that was, but that was awful. I did, however, find some iron, a lot of iron, and so I was one step closer to my leaf armor. My pickaxe did break eventually, and so I sat there and just waited for the morning. Yeah, this this first night was uh, pretty lonely, pretty sad. But as soon as I saw light peeking through my makeshift ceiling, I dug myself out, ate some food, and made shears. This was day two, and I already was crafting my leaf armor. It was pretty easy to make, however it did not give me much protection. I made some glass bottles for my water, and filled up my thirst bar. Okay, finally. Now I was finally in a somewhat decent spot, so I put the rest of the iron in to smelt and went hunting for some food. Turns out I wasn't the only thing doing that. Okay. I carefully killed some gazelles. At least I, I think they're gazelles. Anyways, I tried to stay away from the lion. I'm getting close to... Okay. I got a good bit of food and then went to cook it. And I also killed this fish, because why not? I don't know, I thought it was kind of ugly. Anyways, I was finally able to heal myself, which led me to my second objective. Exploring the area around me. And this freaked me out a little bit. Something just went down over there. Oh! I couldn't see over the tall grass, and I, I know how lions hunt. And then I heard a snake hiss. Oh, I heard a snake. Okay. And so I towered up in a very brave way. We're gonna tower up and looked to see if I could make some sort of makeshift bed, which I couldn't. And so I traveled by treetop until, uh, until I didn't. Oh, okay. That was stupid. And then I came across something really cool. Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah, already on day two, I'd come across this mountain, and I couldn't even see the top. Yeah, I can't even see the top of it. Good news for my summit plan. Not really, I'm quite partial to sarcasm if you hadn't figured that out already. Anyways, the sun was setting and I didn't have a bed, so I tunneled into the side of the mountain and made a little bunker. Once again, I would just have to wait out the night. I decided to peek outside a little and immediately regretted it before doing the wordle for the day. Yeah, while I was bunkered and hiding from the horrors outside, I did the New York Times wordle. And I got it on my fifth try. The word was doing. I don't know why any of this is relevant to you. Anyways, day three rolled around, and I decided that I wanted to build a shelter. However, Mother Nature had some different plans for me. Oh no. Is it gonna rain? It's raining. 
At least it doesn't rain in the savanna, but wait, mobs can spawn. Oh, okay. I quickly realized how bad of a situation this was. Okay, we gotta go. Oh. I got down to three hearts. And eventually, I reached the shore. Gotta get in the water. This is where I decided to get some wood so that I could build a boat. But even getting wood was difficult. Remember, this is hardcore, which means that every mob's difficulty is on the hardest level. So skeletons are now 5-star retired Navy SEAL snipers with their crosshairs all pointed at me. That might be a little bit dramatic, but I was not doing well here, okay? I was on death's porch, waiting to be let into the afterlife. But I got in my boat, and I sailed along the coast for a while. Eventually, the atmosphere lightened up a little, and I came across the best possible thing I could have come across. Wait, is that... Yes, it is. I got some pretty decent loot and introduced myself what? to the villagers. Okay. Needless to say, I would be staying here for the night. We're sleeping together tonight. On day four, I looted what I could, and I actually blew up one of their homes by accident. I felt kind of bad, but they should have kept the doors closed, so it's not really my fault. Anyways, today I came across a whole variety of animals. What? It's opening its mouth at me. Ah, uh, are these guys happy? Hi. I, <laughs> I don't want to kill you. I don't. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to kill you. And after that National Geographic experience, I doubled down on the whole shelter objective. I got myself a lot of wood from these palm trees, found some pretty strange ruins, and then discovered the perfect spot for my house. I began on the floor plan and went to go get some more palm tree wood, and by the time I came back, it was time for me to sleep. And so, now, finally having a bed, I bravely and skillfully built a little pillar and then went to sleep. Day 5 was deforestation day. Yeah, I chopped down so many trees because my new objective that I set for myself was to finish the floor plan of my little hillside estate, and uh, not too much happened on day 5 other than gathering wood, but I did kill this crab, literally for no reason. I just wanted to. You know? And, uh, then this happened. No. Okay, yep, that's the one from earlier. That's one of the... How... You followed me all the way up this mountain? I'm... I... Okay. Alright, apparently it's not even a joke. Go on. After the Crab Rebellion, I put my bed on my half-finished floor plan and went to sleep. Day 6 wasn't too different, but I did come across spruce logs. Ooh. Spruce, okay. Wish I knew that this was here. And so I completely redid my entire floor, because acacia is kind of an ugly floor to have. I got some more palm tree wood. I don't know why I'm calling it that. It's literally just jungle wood. But anyways, I decided that day 7 was going to be an exploration day. And so I woke up on day 7 and set off to explore the area around my house. I probably should have done this sooner, but I'm a gambling man. And I did soon spot something near my house. Oh? Steamboat. Okay. So I did not bring my boat, of course. I didn't explore it because I didn't have my boat, and you saw those crocodiles. Yeah, I'm not risking it. Anyways, I came across the jungle and decided to take a quick look around. Alright, shears. Do your magic. I didn't find much within the jungle, but right outside of it was this abandoned campsite. Oh? And with that... It was time for me to head back home. My current plan is to finish the floor of my house, and then take a big exploration trip over the course of a few days. Therefore, day 8 was a okay. working day. Home improvement day. I got lots of wood. Like, lots. I outlined everything in spruce, and was pretty happy with my progress. That's why, on day 9, I set off on my big adventure. I gathered some items, including a bed and my water buckets, as well as a good bit of food. I finally decided to explore the shipwreck, and with no crocs in sight, I found okay. some pretty good loot. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, just more of this. Alright. I also collected a lot of concrete off the ship for me to use in my house, because, you know, why not? Anyways, shortly after looting the shipwreck, I came across another ship. Oh. And a temple. Oh. With night approaching, I got okay. on the ship to set up camp. Make our own entrance? Well, that's not so bad. 
Kind of cool, thinking that I spent the night in an abandoned ship out in the African shoreline. It was day 10. This was an important milestone because it meant that I was one-tenth of the way through this challenge. One-tenth. That's like 10%. Or 0 0.1. Anyways, I decided to explore the ominous temple. And yes, I had some trouble almost immediately. Yeah, I hear mobs. Hi, friend. Combat pro. PvP pro. Having avoided danger, I went around the back and found some pretty great loot. Loot here. Okay. This is it. And then I leave. There we go. This is... This is what I needed. Yep. Like, really good stuff. I made the right choice in exploring this. And then I left the temple only to come across another shipwreck with more great loot. Alright. What do we have in here? Day 10 was pretty great so far. However, it wasn't over yet. I decided that it was time to head back home, as my inventory was now full. And in order to do so, I had to cut through the jungle. And that was not fun. Ooh, okay. After escaping the jungle, I came across my hill that I lived on. Or so I thought. How far was it? Wait. That's not a hill. Yeah, it turns out I was back at Mount Kilimanjaro somehow. Don't ask me how. I couldn't tell you. The sun was setting, and so I had to get my bed out and sleep fast. And yeah, I had lost my home. However, I soon discovered something rather important. Wait, was my hill a part of the mountain? No, that's my house, okay. So, uh, I guess my house is technically on part of Mount Kilimanjaro, which is a really weird thought. And so I spent the rest of the day building up my new home. I ran into a problem when I found a mob infestation underneath the house. And once again, I was faced with imminent danger. Especially since my armor had just broken. Regardless, I dealt with those mobs, and on day 12, I finally started on my roof. I decided to use the terracotta I had mined from the ship, but then I ran into a tiny problem. Hmm. It's not centered. Very much not centered. With my roof finally centered, I decided that I needed more blocks. Therefore, I would be taking a resource collection trip on day 13. But before I could do that, something really odd happened. Oh, 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 what are, why? Ooh, ooh, get, stay away, what? Thank you for your... You're, uh, stopping by. Having introduced myself to my new friend, I decided to make a small farm before I left to collect resources. This made me realize just how annoying this elephant was going to be. Anyways, it's time for me to start my resource adventure. Doesn't sound so fun out loud. Resource adventure. Never mind that. I came across some familiar faces before completely stripping the boat of its terracotta. And on day 14, I decided that this wasn't enough. I wanted to see what was out there, beyond the horizon, Ooh. beyond the line where the sky meets the sea. It was calling me, and so I traveled a long way. Naturally, I ended up getting lost. Completely lost. However, I did soon find something interesting. Did I, uh, is this the Badlands? Yeah. Okay. Due to the weather, I couldn't make out much of the Badlands, but I could see the wildlife that it had to offer. That's new. Those are not new. And while the wildebeest were cool and all, it was the hyenas that were a bit more concerning to me. These are hyenas. Alright, yeah, we... Okay. I'm gonna keep my distance from them. Either way, the sun was setting, and so I set up a makeshift camp and went to sleep. And in the morning, I could truly appreciate these badlands. You see, Africa's badlands are quite amazing. In fact, according to the magazine New Scientist, this rocky land and the desert adjacent to it cover roughly 9 million square kilometers of northern Africa. Egypt itself is just a million square kilometers in size, so imagine nine separate Egypts of desert and rock spread out over northern Africa. But that doesn't even tell you how gorgeous these badlands can be.
And with all these incredible facts in mind, I decided not to explore the Badlands, but rather the dry and dusty desert next to it. I guess the sight of camels was, uh, more interesting to me. However, I would soon come across something that was truly interesting. That's a little bit more than desert. Wait a minute. I took so much from this village, but to be fair, they had a lot to offer. More than the other village I had visited. Hello. The idea of making a saddle for my camel friends piqued my interest, and so I collected whatever leather I could find. And to end the day on a fun note, I had some company while I slept. <laughs> it stole his bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey guys. On day 16, I finished up at the village, and at this point, I wanted to head towards my home, yet I found myself to be entirely lost. I came across a few tropical islands, which were completely bare. However, on day 17, I found some life. And so, of course, I decided to try to kill this lioness. This was the dumbest thing I had done so far in this series. Like, what was I thinking? A pen? A zoo pen? Yeah, I, I deserved the outcome here. Oh, okay. That's a lot of damage. Okay. I should not have been doing that, clearly. I spent the rest of the day traveling, trying to find my home, and that's why, when I came across this familiar hill, I was quite happy. That happiness soon faded as I reunited with a certain guest. Oh no. Day 18 was pretty uneventful as I just worked on my roof. I found out that there was not enough terracotta on the ship to cover my roof, and that I'd have to craft it from here on out. And so I came to the conclusion that I'd have to go back to the desert village to steal their terracotta so I could dye it gray and finish my roof. I really am a great ambassador of villages, aren't I? But before I could put this plan into action, on day 19, I had had enough of a certain someone. Okay. So this is what's gonna happen. I am not gonna see you anymore. Okay. Yep. Okay. And that is that taken care of. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know any different, would you? Yet, as I built my balcony, I had some much more annoying guests. Uh oh. Um, look, the elephant is over there, so... Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's, that's not gonna work. This was the toughest situation I'd been in yet. My shield was about to break, I couldn't sleep without risking my life, and as the sun set, hostile mobs spawned all around me. Having to think quickly, I ran up to my roof and set up a small camp on top of it. Alright. Um, yeah, I need water. Of course I need water. From here, I recovered all I could, but without water, there wasn't much I could do. I was in a lot of danger. But, the stars are pretty. At least I can finally see the stars now. This is... It's very pretty. Having patiently yeah. waited out the night... This is really nice. I got some water. And finished off the pillagers. Finally, it was time for me to get more terracotta, and so off to the desert village I went, until about halfway there when I realized I had forgotten something. I didn't bring a bed. I'm dumb. Yeah, so I have to, I literally have to get to the desert today. That made this a race to the village before the sun set. Here it is. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, mobs are gonna start spawning now. Okay. And as I neared the village just in time, it seems I had forgotten one other very important thing. Oh. That is my fault though, isn't it? Because I brought the omen thing? Is that is that how that works? <sighs> I didn't know that that was even a feature. However, that didn't matter as I now had a very big issue on my hands. While under attack from crossbow fire, I climbed to the top of the tower and decided that the best thing I could do was rob this village of all of their terracotta. I did feel slightly bad though, so I tried to help this villager escape from his assailant, and it didn't go so well. Yeah, no, we're, we're not, we're not, this isn't fun, this isn't fun, this isn't fun, fun, haha. -ha. This is not funny, funny, haha. -ha. This is not silly, silly, goofy. Okay. On the way out of the village, I realized that I would need bone meal and ink sacks so I could dye my terracotta gray for the roof. And out of nowhere, 
I ended up in crocodile country. Ooh, that's a croc, that's a croc. Okay, that's a couple of them. The next day, I set out to find Ink Saxon bone meal, and I wasn't too worried about bone meal, as I could easily get that from a skeleton, but the Ink Sacks proved to be a tough find, as I couldn't even find the ocean. Yeah, I spent this whole day trying to find the ocean, and when I finally reached it, the sun had started setting, and so I slept on the same ship as before. And when I woke up, I raced to the open ocean. Now before we continue, there are some things that you should know about me. I love traveling, I love animals, and I hate the ocean. Something about deep water scares me unlike anything else. And so when I jumped in the ocean to try to find a squid... Ooh, ew, that's a shark. How am I gonna squid? How, how do I get a squid here? Eh, yeah, get away from me, you little... You little thing. I didn't handle it so well. Especially since I could see many dangerous creatures below the water. I did end up collecting some blobfish before I realized that I had left my bed back on the ship. I'm such a bad thinker sometimes. After surviving the night, I renewed my quest for black dye, and that's why I came across this structure in the desert. Okay. I don't know what it is or why I was there, but I looted it, and it had some pretty useful loot. Oh including a music disc. Oh. Shortly after, I found myself in the Badlands. In a desperate hunt for black dye, I killed a hyena. Look, I didn't do it, so you guys can't aggro on me. Oh, this, this hurts. I don't like this. And it dropped nothing. However, that's why I decided that brown terracotta, which was currently all around me, might make for a better roof. But I didn't have much time to think about that as a pack of wild hyenas saw me kill their friend, and were now attacking me. Oh, and I'd run out of water. They're still going. They're still going at me. Oh, this is so bad. Are they still going at me? The next day was a mining day in the Badlands. I had made up my mind to use brown terracotta instead of gray terracotta, as I couldn't seem to find a squid. And therefore, five stacks of terracotta and two iron pickaxes later, I left to head home and slept next to this rhino here. Day 26 was a waste. I tried to head home, but ended up getting lost, pillaring up to find my mountain, and then somehow found myself back at the Badlands. No. I was frustrated, but I also didn't have anyone else to blame but myself. After long travel the next day, I finally made it home. So much just stuff. No, but see, if, if I were to have a house in real life, this is what it'd be like. It'd just be stuff. Now, it was just time for me to replace my roof and finish... Uh, I didn't have enough terracotta. Yeah. All five stacks were somehow not enough. And so on day 28, I went a little crazy. I'm gonna take my pickaxes. In case I find iron there, I'm gonna take my furnace. I want to settle down and enjoy my farm and enjoy all of the amenities that my house has to offer. I wanted to live in this house for more than one night. But no, I didn't get enough. I spent the entire day mining every block of brown terracotta within these badlands. Maybe not every block, but still, they would all be mine. And while I mined, I figured out exactly what kind of layout I wanted my house to have. And so it was time to head home with my new inventory full of terracotta. And on the way, I found an abandoned safari vehicle and searched it, but it didn't seem to have any loot. And then, I made it home, and got to work on the roof. Oh, and watch me collect all of these blocks. This was it. I could finally relax and work on my house. After every trip I had gone on for resources, or just exploring, it felt great to finally be at home building. And you know what? That made this place really feel like home. Apart from a stray pillager, which I made quick work of. And so, day 32, much like day 31, was just me building up my really cool looking house. I decided where I wanted everything to be, and apart from a golden skeleton attacking me, I had an entirely peaceful day. I mean, I know that home improvement with peace and quiet must not be the most exciting thing to watch, but come on, this house is starting to look pretty good here. Now you are probably wondering where the entrance will be, and so for that, I decided to have a cavern-like entrance below the balcony, kind of like a bat cave. I like Batman. 
Batman's pretty cool. Anyways, I not only wanted that, but I wanted my room to be in a little loft at the top. And so I built the loft and got the house ready for some interior design. This way I would finally get to use all the little items and trinkets I had been collecting throughout this series. And I would be starting with the kitchen. First of all, I love kitchen decorations. I don't know what qualifies as a kitchen decoration or why I love them, but just know that I was very excited to get started on this. And so the first thing I wanted to build was a stove. Now, for this stove I would need bricks, iron, and a campfire. None of which I had, all of which I could obtain. In fact, bricks were easy. All I had to do was break pots within these ruins that were near my home. Before I could collect iron in the campfire though, the sun started to set, and so I decided to finish out the day by collecting sand for my windows. The next morning, I finished collecting the sand, but not before a close call with a crocodile. I got the materials for a campfire, and so now all I was missing was the iron. So, to the mines I went. However, I noticed that the wind was picking up a bit. The next day I found some iron and then crafted the stove. I then had some fun trying it out. That's cool. That is so cool. Oh, okay. That was, that was, that was dumb. That was dumb. Due to the mob infestation below my house, I decided that maybe a normal entrance would be best for now. But with that being said, this place was finally starting to resemble some kind of home. And so on day 38, I set off to defend my home from the invasive mobs below. And while I'd already obtained a bow from my travels, Crossbows are more my style. Yeah, I barely killed any mobs. Hardcore is tough. And yeah, maybe I haven't mentioned this, but uh, this is the first time I've ever played Hardcore Survival. So uh, maybe that was starting to show a little bit. Regardless, on day 39, I decided to do something bold. I was going to try to see how far up the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro I could get or if I could even just make the summit now. I started to scale the mountain when I realized that the peak was a bit further than I had thought. Oh no, that's not the summit. That is. And then the cold set in. Okay, okay. This, to date, was the closest I had been to death in this series. And all because I decided to climb the mountain with no gear. I really have no one else to blame here but myself. And the next day was my last home improvement day for a while. I noticed that the wind had picked up a bit, and so I finished the floor of my room and figured out what I'd be doing for the next few days. And I had a pretty good idea in mind. You see, I had built myself a vehicle. And not just any vehicle, but a motor coach. I spent days 41 and 42 collecting over 50 pieces of iron, lots of copper, and natural rubber, whatever that is. And so, on day 43, I set off into the African wilderness, because I would be going hunting. I decided that I wanted to hunt some of Africa's biggest animals and see what they dropped. My ledger consisted of crocodiles, rhinos, elephants, and of course, lions. And I had found my first target. Crocodile scute. However, when it came time for me to pick up my vehicle, this happened. Uh oh. Oh no. Wait. Oh. Okay. So, in short, yes. This was now the lowest I had been in the series, and the lowest I could possibly be in Hardcore Minecraft. And the last two days were for nothing. So, I was disappointed, to say the least. I don't know what to say about that. That was... wildly disappointing. Yet, my hunting adventure continued. And, the very next day, I found not one, but two of my targets. Ooh, okay. And... Unfortunately, but understandably, the rhino didn't drop anything. And you know what? I'm kind of glad that it didn't. It spreads an important commentary on poaching. Yet, I still had to clear my ledger, and the lion didn't count, as I didn't kill it. And so, to continue my hunting adventure, I would have to cut through the jungle. And that's when I came across this abandoned camp. Oh, look at this. This is great. Oh, get some food. And this seemingly abandoned treehouse. 
Hold up. Oh, first off, this is... I'm absolutely taking this. I collected these little mushroom heads and was really happy with what I'd come across. Yet, this is where I would get the most unexpected jump scare. Oh. I'm sure you all thought that that was funny. Luckily, there's a golden apple in the barrel here, which, if you're unaware, has a certain amount of healing. The next morning, after hearing hordes of skeletons above me, I got as far away from the treehouse as I could. I then spent this entire day navigating the jungle until I eventually reached the shore. And before I went to sleep, I heard some strange noises. What is that? Is that an actual mob? On day 47, I found the source of these noises. Oh, hey, that's, that's for real. You want, you want food? This might be Minecraft, but these creatures are quite a rare encounter. In fact, they've been labeled as critically endangered in the wild. But I said my goodbyes and moved onward. I eventually came across the village from the beginning of this series and decided to camp here since I knew lions and elephants had to be nearby. You do wonder what happened to your floor. And when the morning rolled around, I found the lions pretty quickly. Now all I had to do was find the elephants. However, the next day, I had trouble leaving my bed. With no snake in sight, I came across my target and, with the necessary precautions, took it down. But I'll be honest, this one was a bit upsetting to kill. Having dropped nothing, it basically had no reason to die. And without trying to sound preachy, I do like that both the elephant and the rhino didn't drop anything due to the ongoing problem that Africa faces with poaching. But, on a happier note, I found a really big fish. I had had enough of my semi-successful hunting adventure, and decided to head home. But in typical me fashion, I got lost along the way, and ran into an entirely new village. That's kind of cool. And this one had some really yeah. cool carpets. <laughs> oh, I love it. But it wasn't just the village that was new to me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Now, I had clearly forgotten that hippos are actually very dangerous animals, being the most dangerous animals in all of Africa. According to the BBC, they kill around 500 people per year there. Bit of a morbid fact, but still pretty interesting. However, not so fun facts aside, it was time for me to truly head home. And I had just realized that I was now over halfway done with this challenge. And so I guess this is where I ask you to subscribe if you like what you've seen so far. If you've made it to day 50 with me, then I guess you're probably enjoying this series. So just wait, because there will be many more of these in the future. But with that being said, I was quite happy to be doing some home improvement again. My current plan was to attempt the Kilimanjaro Summit on day 61, and so, between now and then, my goal was to make this place look great. And that started with something simple, a calendar in my room. I then made some kitchen cabinets and put some stylish carpet around my bed. However, the next day, I got a bit more fancy. These grapevines served as a perfect detail for my home, but it wasn't until I came across the recipe for water purifier that I'd have something actually useful. And so I made my water purifier and played some music on my jukebox that evening. I know I've said it 50 times in this series, but this home was really coming along. The next morning, I made myself a canteen, which stores much more water than a normal glass bottle. This would be especially useful for the summit. I also replaced my armor and purified some water for the first time. Although, this is when I realized that I had two things to prepare for. The summit of Kilimanjaro and the mob infestation below me. And so, on day 54, I took care of just that. Before going down to deal with the horde, I did make some woolly clothes for me to wear during my climb. And then, I prepared myself and went down to face the monsters. Except, there were none.
This gave me a chance to start to clear out all the dirt from underneath. But then the sun started to set and, not wanting mobs to spawn while I was down there, I focused my attention to my room. The next day, I officially dubbed Dirt Day. This is because I cleaned out all of the dirt below my house. Yeah, I ended up going through three iron shovels, which is kind of impressive. It was also very boring. And with Summit Day approaching, I kept making my house look better and better. I added some natural green spaces into my home, which weren't so green. I also added this elaborate carpet to the main entrance. Lastly, I added some simple furniture. Yet, nothing would top my addition that I made on day 57. It looked better in my head. Look, I just wanted a TV, okay? What did end up looking good were these book stacks I had made. I also discovered that I could craft a flying vehicle of some kind, which I soon realized I absolutely had to build after I climbed the mountain. I just hoped that this vehicle would be better than the last. With my summit just two days away, I had some last minute home improvement to do, and today was all about my farm. I outlined my farm in green terracotta, placed little mushroom heads around it, and gave it some light. The next day I set off to collect more wool for my mountain outfit, and then I tackled one of my house's biggest problems. I made the greenery actually green. I then crafted some hanging pots and stood out on my balcony that night because tomorrow would be a big day. Mount Kilimanjaro. At over 19,000 feet, this mountain has secured its place within the seven summits of the world. That means that it is the tallest mountain on the entire continent of Africa. And it's pretty obvious when you take a look at it. Thousands of people climb this mountain every year, yet not many people know that this mountain is actually a volcano. Now according to National Geographic, it hasn't erupted for 360,000 years, so I'm sure it won't erupt during my summit. But volcano or not, this mountain is incredible. And I, of course, am going to climb it in Minecraft. And so I began. Let's summit. Getting a bit steep here. Now I decided to use ladders to mark my route. This way if I ever wanted to summit again, I would have a much easier time doing so. Yep, we're already pretty high up. That's crazy. Look at that. At this point, I had to swap out my clothes so I wouldn't freeze to death. There we go. With the sun now setting, I figured it would be best to camp in the side of the mountain for the night. And the next morning, I learned that the summit was still a bit further. And there's a creeper. <laughs> I also saw this creeper here. And, not wanting to cause damage to the mountain, I skillfully killed it. I know, very skillful. And then, I reached yeah. the summit. From here, I could even see a few familiar sights. It's crazy, there's the, uh, there's the safari vehicle. I decided to leave a little monument to remember my adventure by, and I also decided to collect some white concrete powder and wool while I waited for night to come. With the night being a bit more dangerous than I had thought, I got ready to set up camp here at the summit, but not before enjoying the view. And the next morning, I began my descent. Interesting. This turned out to be much easier than the summit. I soon made it home a fully new man. Kind of. Because, as soon as I entered my home, I decided that it was time to do some more work. I started on the exterior wall of my cavern, but soon ran out of terracotta to use. So that meant, 
that I would get to visit my favorite village yet again tomorrow. And so on day 64, I set off to do just that. However, I came across another favorite village of mine, as well as a favorite friend. Oh. And after spending the night at the Riverside Village, I left for the desert, still cautious of my subnautic friend. Is that it? Yeah, it is. On my way to the desert, I realized that there is still a biome I hadn't explored properly, one that's very important to Africa. The ocean. You see, Africa's oceans contain some of the most diverse wildlife within the whole continent. Many bodies of water surround Africa, such as the Mediterranean Sea, as well as the Indian and Atlantic Oceans, meaning that Africa is home to a lot of fish. This, of course, includes sharks. But I'd only come across the kinder version of a shark. What is that? The whale shark. Die. Yeah, you're friendly, aren't you? Oh, you're, you're fully just trying to get in my boat with me. That's so cute. Yeah, hi there. Yet that soon changed. What do we have here? Oh, wait, they're eating each other. What's that? Having survived the not-so-aggressive Great Whites, I came across the village I was looking for, only to remember that I had some unfinished business here. Reluctantly, I decided to help the villagers, oh. and it made me realize just how strong iron golems are. Oh wow, you were overpowered. Okay, and you dropped a saddle, which is actually what I was looking for, believe it or not. With victory after victory, I decided to stay here and help my village, until I remembered that I had a meeting to get to. You know what, I might as well just stay here. This is kind of fun. On second thought, I do have a meeting I really have to get to. Having escaped the horrors of war, I set up camp in the desert with my new goal being to mine in the Badlands for terracotta. I saw some interesting wildlife around me in the desert and noticed that my bed was occupied. Yeah, that's not your bed. That's not- no, this is my bed. The next day, I headed to the Badlands in style. My new friend, although not very fast, was certainly cool. Maybe that's my own opinion, but still, I like this camel. I then spent the rest of the day mining as much terracotta as I could. On day 68, I rode my camel back to my home, and I really enjoyed this ride. This is by far faster than anything I'd used before, except maybe the motor coach, but at least my camel won't explode. And when I arrived home, I wanted to build a little area for it. And so, the next morning, I did. I also placed a lot of terracotta for my cavern. And on day 70, I finished my cavern's exterior. I also decided that I wanted to build the airship. I was going to build the airship. And after looking at the recipe, I did some quick math to find out that I would need around 60 iron as well as many other materials to build the ship. And so I started mining, and was immediately less lucky than last time. To counter this problem, the next day I made sure I had enough pickaxes, and then set off again. This time I only got 12 iron, but... At least it's a start. I also found this lush cavern, and quickly wished that I hadn't. Naturally, I went deeper into the caverns after fighting off more hermit crabs, and today I ended up collecting over 30 pieces of iron. Not bad, but still not the best. Exploring these caves also made me appreciate the new lush caves a bit more. They are quite a cool feature. I soon found the rest of the iron that I need and finished up in the caves. And on day 75, I shifted my focus to the 40 pieces of natural rubber that I'd need as well. This comes from jungle wood being processed through a smoker, so in other words, I would need 40 pieces of jungle wood. And so I chopped down more trees by the beach, only to realize that I needed proper jungle wood, not stripped jungle wood. Delighted by this information, I set off into my favorite biome, the jungle. And yet again, I would get a jungle jump scare. I collected my wood and went to the shipwreck to collect some of the copper blocks. And that's why I noticed that I wasn't alone.
After the crocodile encounter, I crafted a few of the parts that I'd need, and discovered that I'd also need proper copper. Not waxed, not in block form, but copper from the mines. And so I went off into the mines with only one issue. I couldn't find my entrance. Even with my natural weed killer, the mine entrance was nowhere to be found. That is, until the next morning, where I discovered that it was actually right next to where I had slept. Moving on, I got my copper and marked off most of the items required for this airship. Yet there is one more item that I needed. One that I found a bit troubling. And that was string. On day 79, I collected what I needed from the mines and thought about where I could find string. And then it hit me. The jungle treehouse had cobwebs on it. So yes, that meant that I would get to go back to the jungle that I love. Lucky me. While trying to find the old treehouse, I found something else instead. An entirely new temple that I hadn't seen before. And so, I went in through the ceiling. Only to find that this place had lots of spiders. Too many, in fact. And yes, this was one of the most stressful situations I had been in throughout this whole series. This was awful. But, I did get my string. And that meant one thing. It was time for me to craft my airship. After getting every piece crafted, it was time. Yet, I wasn't ready to fly it. I figured that if I were to test it properly, I would want to get higher up. A lot higher up. And so, summit number two began. And not far into the summit, I made camp in the hole that I made in my last summit. And on day 82, I reached the summit again. But this time, I wouldn't be here for long. And yeah, this thing looked cool. But, I had to see how it drove. I soon noticed that it used fuel at a very fast pace, so in response, I landed back in my home, and decided that once I had enough fuel, I would be taking this thing on one last adventure, my final adventure in the series. However, there was one thing I wanted to do before my final adventure, and that was to actually finish the cavern below my house. This took a few days to do, but on day 84, I finished the floor, which I guess was a starting point. Also, that sentence rhymed. But, with a good bit of work later, it started to come together. I was taking some inspiration from the lush caverns I had explored, and wanted to give this place a similar vibe. And the next day, I think I did a pretty alright job. Not my best work, but not half bad. To finish off the day, I thought I had earned some TV. It was time for my last adventure. One last look at this amazing world I have come to know. I got in my airship and set off towards the jungle. My first stop would be a place that I hadn't looted properly, the Evil Jungle Temple. Yet, I looted it pretty easily this time. And set off for stop number two, the Riverside Village. Yet, as I landed, I got shot at a lot. After sleeping in the trees though, I woke up to a familiar face, and a terrifying face. While I was barricading in this house, I figured that I might as well get some fuel going. I also decided that it was time to end an age-old rivalry. This cost me my totem of undying that I'd gotten just the day before. I also witnessed a villager get brutally mauled by a lion.
Naturally, this made me want to prank this lioness. If you can even call this a prank. I wanted to drown her, alright? That was my plan. Drowning her. The next morning, I was amazed to see that the lioness had gills. And then, I set off for stop number three. The desert village. Now, I'd left this village in a less than desirable state, so it was only right for me to help out a little bit when I arrived. Yet the damage was worse than I had thought. So, having no place to land but the tower, I parked my airship and thought about how I was going to refuel it. And that's when I remembered that campfires drop charcoal. I had to be extremely careful as pillagers were all around me trying to shoot me. And then the sandstorm began. After some light barricading, I got some charcoal and had to jump from roof to roof in order to get more. One fall, and I would be dead. I also snuck some lava so that I could have some fun with the pillagers. Only, I ended up killing a lot more of them than I intended. And with the raid halfway taken care of, I left. I figured that was the best gift I could leave behind for them. But I had one more stop to make. The first village I went to. And given that it was on the opposite end of the map, I didn't make it in one day. And when I did eventually arrive there, I liked the change of pace that I was met with. Instead of aggressive hippos and lions, or an ongoing raid, I was met with happy little guys who were just doing their thing. And so, I cooked my hippo meat, and on the next day, I said my goodbyes. From here, I had to refuel my ship one more time, before eventually arriving home and parking it on my roof. This was the final stretch. Just five days to go. And these five days weren't too eventful. I was mostly cleaning up the house and doing a couple of last minute crafts. I ended up eating this animal fat and was disgusted by the noise it made. Take a listen. I also ate some blobfish and got food poisoning. I probably should have known. The next day, I made some signs. And the day after that, some beach towels for my camel to sleep on. I also named the camel Valentino after my cat. And over the next two days, not much happened. But I did make this stylish swimsuit for myself. Very stylish. And finally, it was here. Day 100. After putting some plants in these hanging pots, I stepped out onto my balcony to take one last look at the past 100 days. And that was it. I'd survived 100 days in Africa in hardcore Minecraft. And if you've made it to the end of this video with me, then you understand it. There's something really great about this series. I don't know what it was, but I really enjoyed my time in this world. And so, until we meet again.